Hello everyone, today we're going to go through my travel art supplies and discuss what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. I wonder how his night will be The apple does not fall, fall from the tree She said I own Welcome everyone to my channel. This is Elisa Laporte Art and I'm Elisa. Today we are going to go through my travel art supplies. I recently went on a trip to Tahiti and decided to take a bunch of supplies, which we talked about in my Dick Blick art haul video, which I will link in the card above. To get started, the first thing I picked out was this Faber-Castell collapsible water bucket, which came in handy as I could use it if I needed a lot of water and was going to spend a lot of time. I could fill this up. I was also able to use it like this when I just needed a little bit of water. I got this actually at the dollar store. I had been looking everywhere for a case. Nobody had any butterfly pencil cases at the time because school had just ended. So I am on the lookout for a new case. If you guys have any that you have used that you enjoy, uh, let me know in the comments below because I would really love to hear what has worked for you. Um, this one works for now, so I'm content until I find something better, but it is a little shorter than I would like and it does bulge a lot when I have all of my stuff in there. I have a two ounce spray bottle, which comes in handy to get my paints wet, to keep my paper um, from drying up too much. And the two ounce size is wonderful because you can take it on the plane and it's not a problem. But I will advise, do remember to empty it before going through security. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go through the pens and pencils and brushes that I have on this side and then we'll talk about what I have over here. One of my favorite pencils is the Graph Gear 1000 Pentel. You can get them in multiple sizes. This one's a 0.5. I really like the 0.3. You can get 0.7 and then I don't know if you can see here. Maybe it'll focus. You can change the softness. So I can buy lead that's HB and then you can turn this and it can be, or you can buy B, 2B. So you can actually buy different leads and it'll change the size. It is a great pencil. It feels comfortable in my hand. It's got some weight to it without being too heavy or bulky. Um, it has some plastic grips here, so it's very comfortable in my hand. And it does have an eraser on this side as well. To open it, you just click here and it'll come out. And then you click to get the lead out. Now, if you want to close it, you actually just push this button here and it closes. Next I have the Jelly Roll white pen, which I like having, and I did use quite a bit in my artwork while traveling. It allowed me to use white where I didn't, where I missed, or just to add a few highlights, and not have to worry about leaving my whites when you're in a rush and in a hurry. I did bring an extra eraser which I do like and I will keep in there just for those bigger spots you're erasing and this one isn't quite as bulky as your block erasers. I did bring a couple of different pens. These two are Micron's. Um, they are both 0.3 but one of them is sepia and the other one is black for different uh, looks depending on what I want to do. Sometimes I prefer having more of a brown, sometimes I do prefer having a black. Then I also have 
our Faber Castell, which is a liner pen. This one's a little bit thicker. You can see here, compared to the Micron, this one is a 0.3. I believe this one's a 0.5. I don't know if I would keep the two thicknesses. I might take the Faber-Castell one out just because I didn't use it much. I used more of the smaller one because most of my artwork is done on these little sketch pads, watercolor sketch pads. And then I do also have a 0.8 Stedler, which is a nice thick one. I think I will keep this one because I did end up using the thicker lines sometimes and the thinner lines for the tiny details. I brought two different um, Pentel watercolor brushes that you fill with water and they came in handy because I didn't always have time to bring water and one thing I do want to get is some sort of attachment or small water cup because I didn't always want to carry this bulky one and it wasn't always convenient because sometimes I just wanted to grab my bag and take it with me and I didn't always have, oh, I didn't have a water cup and I've seen some people where they've been able to attach it so that's something I'm looking for. If you have any ideas or things that you have seen, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to find a smaller water cup. I've been on the lookout for one and have yet to find something that would work. In the meantime, having these brush pens that already are filled with water really help out. And I have a fine tip and I had more of a wide and flat tip. You can see the water's already coming out. And I was able to water all my paints using these. I do have a large Isabay flat wash brush. When I am doing some larger paintings, which I did have some um, watercolor blocks that were larger and this came in handy and I like that it is so small that it fits perfectly inside of here without being too bulky or taking up too much room. That is an Isabay one and a half inch. And then I have here a liner brush, nothing too fancy, but as you can see because this one is a longer brush. The tip is actually starting to curve because it doesn't fit very well in my bag. That is why I'm kind of looking for something a little bit longer. I like this one. It's great, but it's not long enough for some of my brushes. And then last on this side, are my travel brushes, which I take with me wherever. And as you can see, they are smaller. And then you just open them up and you have a long brush if you prefer, or you can actually keep it just like this to paint with. I prefer putting it on and using the full brush just because I like the weight of the brush. So I have, it's an Escoda. These are really nice, high quality brushes. This one's a size 10 and you can keep them. This keeps them from damaging your bristles when you're traveling, flying, anything like that. And then I have a size six and a size two. And I use all of these. I'll leave the links in the description below where you can find these. Okay, then I have this little zippered pocket, which is nice to keep some things in. And I got this masking 
liquid pen. It's a pump marker, Molotow. I did use it on a couple of my paintings and it worked great as long as the paper was more waxy, like this Canson one right here. It worked great with this type of paper. It was a little bit less porous. Um, see, it's not 100% cotton. So I did use it on one of my art blocks that was 100% cotton and it did not want to come off there. So I wouldn't recommend using it for something like that, but your most of your watercolor notebooks, because of the surface, you're able to use it and it can rub off. But I found that on the ones that were 100% cotton, it absorbed into it and it did not want to come off. And I will show you some of the paintings I used it with. I brought some washi tape. I didn't actually use it. I just brought a few notebooks and to keep them down I actually used these binder clasps and would keep them like that and it would work really well and as I was painting I could just move it up or down depending on what part of the painting I was on and it kept the paper from blowing around and also kept them shut so they weren't damaging the paper um, when they were in my case. Okay, I did bring a kneaded eraser, which I actually didn't use this time, which was fine, but I think I'll keep it in there because I know I will eventually use it. And I brought extra lead for my mechanical pencil. And then I brought a ruler, which I did not use. I don't always use rulers, but I brought it in there just in case I would need it for, I don't know, buildings and such, but, but it doesn't take up much room, so I'm going to leave it in there for now. And then I have paper towels, and as you can see, I even have makeup remover pads because... At one time I had no paper towels and the only thing I had was some makeup remover pads, which worked not the greatest. And when I did find paper towels, I stocked up on them, used them. That's for drying my brushes off. So as you can see, that's everything that I was able to fit in here. All of this, well, with the exception of that. All of this stuff is able to fit into this bag. It's a little bulky, but it does zip up and it works nicely for now with the exception of this brush bending. So I'm hoping to find something a little bit longer. I actually created my own travel set using an Altoids box. I have a bigger travel set, but since I was flying and we were gonna be traveling a lot, I wanted something that would fit inside my case and my travel set is a lot longer than this case. And I usually use that one for plein air painting. So I have a key, which I have, I didn't laminate, but I had some contact paper, which I put over it so that it wouldn't destroy and, and get wet. And I did the same thing with this. I just painted a picture for it and then put on the contact paper and I can put it on here so if my paints are wet and I need to go then they're not going to be creating a mess all over my palette and I also was able to put the paints in here to mix which is why it's a little discolored and then I put my paints in here using micro magnets Let's see if I can get any out to see so they don't come out which is nice So I hot glued some magnets on the back there and I'm able to put them in and I can take them out when they are empty. I have liked all the colors I have in here so far. I have burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw sienna, gold ochre, yellow ochre, Payne's gray, ivory black, cad lemon yellow, hooker's green, viridian, rouge crimson, bright red, Ultramarine Deep, Cerulean Blue, and Phalo Turquoise. I will 
show you what I was able to create. So this one, here, as you can see, I used a lot of the Hooker's Green and the Viridian. And then here I did use the Molotow pen so that this seashell and the waves breaking over here would stay white. And as you can see, it worked quite well. I was able to rub it off and you see the white very nicely here. This is probably one of my favorite paintings I did. Here is the island of Bora Bora. Again, I was able to use the Molotow to capture some of these small little buildings. And then I did use my white pen in a few places. This is a Canson watercolor notebook. It's a four and one eighth by six and one eighth, and it is 140 pounds or 300 grams. It's a great little travel watercolor notebook. I also brought in my bag Moleskin sketchbook, which I was able to do a few sketches. I really liked it. Um, I liked the tinted paper and how smooth it was. It made drawing really easy and nice. And it was very lightweight so I could put it in my bag and not worry about the weight of it. And then here is the Moleskin watercolor sketchbook, which I'd never used a watercolor Moleskin before. So I was very curious what the paper would be like. I did like this strap because I was able to put it over the paper to keep it from blowing around as I was painting. Here they have the pocket in the back. I love this paper. It is so soft and the paints, I, I just loved the effect that they had. I think this one was my favorite sketchbook for watercolors that I have used. I've used several different kinds and Sometimes they're too waxy and the paint doesn't go on very well. This one was soft without being 100% cotton. The paint went on beautifully. It didn't dry really fast like I've had with some other watercolor sketchbooks. The paint, you put it on and then it dries really fast. It didn't do that here. Then I did a palm tree, which I found out there. They actually call them coconut trees, not palm trees. So I did get a little bit of painting in and drawing, which was really great. So I think I will take out a couple of these pens. I didn't need as many as I put in there. Like I said, I like this one, but it was difficult on some papers. So just be careful if you are going to use it. It is great, but not on 100% cotton. I loved the colors that I have. I might switch it out depending on where I travel to and what I'm doing. And I don't know if I will keep the tape in there because I didn't really use it at all. I don't know. Have you guys used your tape a lot? I guess it depends on if I'm using actual paper. I mostly use the sketchbooks or watercolor blocks. So I haven't really had a need for it. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just taking up room. I don't know. Let me know of any questions you have about any of the materials and let me know what you have in your travel kits and what has worked for you. So this kind of a travel art kit is mostly for when you're traveling because it's so small and compact. set that I use for plain air painting, it actually fits inside a backpack and I am working on a video for that one, which will be coming up soon. And I will show you the difference between that and this. This is more, I'm traveling, I still want a way to be able to capture a few moments and still be able to paint, but I don't want to take everything with me. I will put all this back in here and zip it up and let you see how everything fits. Okay, there you go. That's how everything fits in here. As you can see, it's not too bulky. 
I just would like something a little longer. I don't mind it. It will work. It was only a dollar, so I'm not going to complain, but I'm worried about this fabric eventually ripping. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a vinyl, and they do tend to rip over time, so I am looking for something else. Please let me know if you have anything that you have loved and worked for this amount of stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of the support and comments you guys have made. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to hit that bell so you can be notified when I post more videos like this, as well as reviews and speed paints. I hope you have a wonderful day and keep on painting!